U.S. Generation 6 Fighters – What's True and What's a Bluff of the Pentagon On September 14, 2020, the Pentagon unexpectedly announced the successful testing of a full-scale flight demonstrator of a sixth-generation fighter jet. According to Assistant Commander of the U.S. Air Force for Acquisition and Logistics Will Roper, who gave an interview with Defense One, the U.S. has literally demonstrated something magical. The news seems fantastic. After all, they just recently started talking about a sixth-generation fighter. It's not yet a clearly defined concept, what it should be. And then one time it already tested, which demonstrated something magical. In this video, we'll present our interpretation of this event. According to the same defense news, the Air Force has developed a new fighter in about a year, an incredibly short period by modern standards. For example, Lockheed Martin built the X-35 demonstrator as part of the fifth-generation fighter program F-35 for four years. And it should be taken into account that before that, it had already created the F-22, the world's first fifth-generation fighter. And here it is a demonstrator of the sixth-generation fighter from scratch within a year. Recall that the U.S. created a sixth-generation fighter program, Next Generation Air Dominance, or abbreviated NGAD, this is a joint project of the U.S. Air Force and U.S. aircraft companies. Will Roper did not give any details. Absolutely. We don't know a single specification. We don't know what it looks like, what it's called, how fast it flies, how maneuverable it is, or what special capabilities it has. We don't know anything. So what do we do when we know nothing? Analyze the information we have and think. To assess what problems the developers had to solve in a year, let's understand, what is a sixth-generation fighter jet anyway? The question is far from trivial. After all, five or six years ago, experts were arguing about what criteria a fifth-generation fighter should meet. At the same time, the F-35 was already in full operation, and the F-22 was even withdrawn from production. As a result, the insanely expensive to produce and operate F-22, and with some reservations, the F-35 of categories A and B, Russian Su-57 and Chinese J-20 were unequivocally recognized as the fifth-generation fighter. Generally, fifth-generation cruise equipment is characterized by the use of stealth technology, phased antenna array, and power plant, allowing not only a prohibitive cruise speed of 1.5 to 2 Mach, but also maneuvering with a controlled thrust vector at once in several planes plus the high level of avionics equipment including a system of electronic warfare, and what can we say about the flight technical and tactical characteristics of aircraft in the next, the sixth stage of evolution? In the absence of clearly and unambiguously approved and internationally recognized parameters, we can still say that the sixth generation fighter should be controlled by artificial intelligence, that is, it can be piloted by both the pilot who's in the cockpit and the operator who's on the ground rather designed to control and limit the actions of the onboard computer, which has many degrees of freedom. It can also be said that such machinery is capable of controlling a swarm of drones. This is the concept of modern air warfare, where there's one leader and a swarm of slaves engaging in direct combat and, if necessary, taking the hit. Also, all the experts agree about the possibility of the spacecraft of the sixth generation to fly at prohibitive speeds they even name 4 to 5 Mach, which is 5,600 kilometers an hour, and even go to a suborbital altitude in near space, which requires an appropriate level of engine building because the atmospheric engine cannot function at altitudes exceeding 30 kilometers. Initially, it was supposed to include a combat laser in the arsenal of the sixth generation aircraft. However, already in the summer of 2019, there was information that, while the combat laser is cancelled, there will be a laser system of electronic warfare which will dazzle the air-to-air -air missiles of the likely enemy. But the most interesting thing is something else. The U.S. is developing a system of introducing computer viruses at a great distance. In other words, the enemy's air defenses will be defeated not by striking weapons, but by disabling them with a computer virus. And now, Will Roper wants to assure us that all these sixth-generation fighter systems have been created, at least in the draft form? What adds to the skepticism is the fact that the developer of this demonstrator is not named. Of course, it could be either Northrop Grumman or Lockheed Martin. The former is put on its wings the famous B-2 Spirit, and the latter is known for the development of no less famous F-22 and F-35. 
But why is no specific company named? Why such secrecy? Or maybe the Pentagon decided to play the American favorite game of poker once again, that is, to start bluffing? Recall that bluffing in poker is behavior that gives your opponent the impression that you hold a much stronger card than you do. What does it mean again? Do you mean the Pentagon has already bluffed? Yes. Recall the Strategic Defense Initiative, also known as Star Wars. Announced by U.S. President Ronald Reagan on March 23, 1983, its main goal was to create the scientific and technological foundation for the development of a large-scale, space-based missile defense system. What was not included there? Orbital stations with chemical lasers, nuclear-pumped lasers, warhead-catching nets, and rail guns. The defense initiative was advertised like a Hollywood blockbuster, conferences, endless press releases, and a photo of Reagan on the cover of Time. And it all ended up being a bluff. The Pentagon wanted to convince the Soviet leadership that it was about to develop a missile defense that Soviet nuclear missiles like Satan could not penetrate. And that was it. Either raising the white flag or an American nuclear strike. And the USSR got involved in another, as it turned out, an unbearable round of the arms race. Then the collapsing oil prices finally killed the USSR. So maybe now the US leadership wants to repeat the winning strategy. They want to force Putin to invest money not into real projects, but into a chimera. After all, according to expert forecasts, the sixth generation fighter should appear in the mid 30s. To get it sooner would require a powerful scientific and technological breakthrough lavishly lubricated with money. And the White House wants to assure the Kremlin that they almost have a sixth generation fighter in their pocket, which means throw everything away and deal only with this plane to catch up with us. Two years have passed since then. It seems that the Russians did not fall for the bluff this time. And now the United States Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, has recently announced that the replacement for the F-22 Raptor will not be a single aircraft, but a set of next-generation capabilities for combat operations in challenging environments. He said that the technology continues to evolve and the NGAD effort is now seen as a family of systems that includes several elements, including several autonomous drones accompanying manned aircraft in formation. It turns out that there will be several aircraft of some kind, each performing some function. So then what was the demonstrator tested in 2020? But then Frank Kendall added that a fighter that would be similar to the F-22 or F-15EX has moved into the development phase. And then how do his words fit with what Lockheed Martin showed in a video at the Air Warfare Symposium 2020 event in Orlando? There we saw an unusual looking integrated airplane with flying wings and tailless features, the machine has a sweeping wing, the overhangs of which are connected to the nose of the fuselage. The wing consoles are trapezoidal in plan. The aircraft has a pair of keels, and they're made folding in some modes. They must lie in the appropriate niches on the wing. In the nose of the aircraft are located cockpit and equipment compartments. It's flanked by well-developed engine nacelles. The air intakes are brought out on the upper side of the wing and are covered from below by radar. So what Lockheed Martin showed and the aircraft Frank Kendall talked about are not the same thing. It looks like a 2020 demonstrator that embodied some of the functions of a sixth generation fighter jet was tested, for example, controlling the aircraft with artificial intelligence. It's not for nothing that the Pentagon said it was necessary to shift the focus from hardware to software development. And what is artificial intelligence? It's software. And the following information about these 2020 tests appeared in the Russian press. In the field of development of artificial intelligence for the sixth generation fighter, the Russian side knows that tests of the prototype, full-size demonstrator, showed insufficient controllability of the American aircraft and failure when performing climbing maneuvers. Also, some commands from the remote operator panel were not executed. Let's summarize. The Pentagon, it seems, refuses to create any single sixth generation fighter. And now the main efforts are directed at the development of artificial intelligence for the aircraft, which will allow it to control swarms of drones without entering the A2AD anti-access area denial areas to destroy the enemy's air defense. But to gain air supremacy to fight the Russian Su-57s, Chinese J-20s, and possibly the sixth generation fighters of these countries, another sixth generation fighter will be created with hypersonic speed, super maneuverability, laser system of electronic warfare, and armed with hypersonic air-to-air -air missiles. 
Well, let's keep watching the NGAD program and see if our assumptions were correct. In the meantime, the Air Force has asked Congress for nearly $1.7 billion for NGAD in its fiscal year 2023 budget, including $133 million to fund research, development, testing, and evaluation. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There are many more interesting videos about modern weaponry coming soon.